when he he didn't go that way and I'm like thank you there buddy <laughs> amen amen brother Todd would you lead us in prayer would you please sir amen maybe seated I didn't know you were finished Um, I see some of you made it through the weather that we had a little earlier. I understand we did get a few tornadoes to touch down uh, in Georgia, and then I hear that I heard there was loss of life somewhere in Alabama. So let's keep uh, those folks in prayer. But uh, I tell you, folks, I know the weather kept a lot of folks out of church tonight, but, man, we, we had church today. We had church, and uh, if anyone left Westside Baptist Church today feeling uh, spiritually puny, it was their fault, because <laughs> we had God here today. And so, gentlemen, you come, if you would, at this time, and let's take up the tithe and the offering. But, uh, Lord's good to us. Brother Doug, if you would, ask the Lord to bless it.
Amen. Good to see um, all of you here tonight. Daddy's sitting at the organ. He looked up at me and said, you going to call the congregation up to the choir loft? And I said, <laughs> no, I don't think we'll do that tonight. Um, well, didn't Rachel do a good job on that song this morning? I tell you, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, you know, I mean, that was, uh, we've been listening to it in practice for two or three weeks, and uh, we knew it was, was good, but boy, she had a touch on her this morning. I appreciate her um, singing that new song for us. We've got another new one tonight. <laughs> don't, don't cringe. <laughs> she already cringing, so I hope it's, uh, y'all have got it ready. Um, if um, Mandy, William, if y'all come around, I don't know if mics are up here. It's been a, uh, I don't know if you've seen the some of the posts that um, Brian Bridges you know, posted today. It's um, awful, awful what happened to his mother uh, yesterday. He was coming out of a restaurant, walking across the parking lot, minding her own business, and car out on the road was going too fast, missed, hit another car, and went through the parking lot and hit and killed her. Oh my and uh, he's been posting videos of her playing piano and them two singing. Uh, Brian was a youth pastor here for a few years back and uh, did a wonderful job, Took a, started pastoring and moved over to Alabama. He's been over there for quite some time. Uh, but it's heartbreaking to... Uh, to realize what has happened uh, this weekend, but he he said something today on the uh, uh, on his post. He said, you know, he said uh, I couldn't have done it. I couldn't have got on there the next day and even been had enough composure to talk about it. But he said, he said, you know, we've cried, but we've also laughed because we we think about situation. It's and it's just different when. Christians, this happens in Christians' life because we have hope. Uh, we know there's this is not the end, and it's sad that her life was cut short, but she's with Jesus, uh, and he knows that he'll see her again. Uh, this song is titled, I'll Be There, and um, I was sitting one night um, at the house, um, the way, way our living room is situated, we've got two sofas in there, and Pina sits on one corner, and I sit on one corner of another one, and I'm enthralled in the TV right here, and she usually sleeps 24-7, <laughs> um, but for some reason that night, I don't know where she picked this video up from, but she was listening to this video, and I could tell it was Karen Peck singing, and um, I listened to it, and the more I listened to it, and she'd run it again, and then I went to it and started listening to it over and over and, and um, gave it to um, Missy to see if she could sing the part. And um, William had already heard it and learned it, and I thought, my goodness, what a song. Listen to the words of this new song. Um, you may get rough down here. Um, may have hard, hard times. You may have death in a situation like that, sad. Um, but we know where we're going, don't we?
Yes, ma'am. Amen. Praise the Lord. The grace of God. That's right. Amen. Amen. Every one of us could be in a position like our brothers and sisters in Christ uh, in the Cain family tonight for a situation like Brother Dave was talking about. A lady just crossing the parking lot and getting hit. Killed un- unexpectedly. It's amazing how God's grace helps us through. I've been to the lost funerals. I watched them fall over. Talking about the lost, fall over into the caskets, and collapse on the floor, screaming. Weeping uncontrollably. It comes time to close the casket. I've seen family members scream out, Don't close it, don't close it, don't close it, and melt away on right onto the floor. But I must be honest with you. I've never seen a Christian do that. We've got something. In God, don't we? Mm. All of grace is my story all the way from earth to glory since by grace he lifted me from sin and woe Living grace he has extended as on him my heart depended. And he'll give new grace when it's my time to go. Grace. 
Grace not yet discovered. Grace not yet uncovered. Grace from his bountiful store. Grace to cross the river. Grace to face forever. There'll be new grace when it's my time to go. Listen, I know Christians, yes, Christians that are approaching death because of sickness and disease. And I've seen them go through the fear of, of the fear of dying. Not that they were afraid of going to hell, but just the unknown of the process of dying. But I found it amazing that God gives us grace. Even during that time, he gives us grace. And I listened to our sister just now give her testimony, and then my sister give her testimony. And I couldn't help, but the, uh, the sustaining grace of God seemed to resonate in my heart. In Psalm 55, 22, Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall sustain thee. Can I read that? And uh, put other meanings that are derived from the Greek word that means sustain. Well, or Hebrew word, I'm sorry. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. He shall bear thee up. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. And he shall contain thee. (laughs) Amen. Man, that got a hold of me. He said, I, I just got to give you this simple illustration. Every once in a while, I'll bring something to the church to eat. And you know what I'll do? I'll put it in a one-gallon Ziploc bag. I like to eat a lot, apparently. I contain it. And when I squeeze the top of that black plastic, that plastic bag and I zip it, it's tight. It's airtight. You could drop it in water, pick it up, open it up, and still eat a dry sandwich. That thing is contained. It is taken care of. It is surrounded. There's plastic under the plate, over the plate, and around the plate. It is totally contained. And when we experience the sustaining grace of God, we are contained. We are sealed underneath. We are sealed atop, around our sides. And I want, might put it this way. The Lord keeps us dry and fresh. Amen. All by the sustaining grace of God. Then it also means this. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall feed thee. That's right. When we finally give up and say, God, you take care of it, there is a feeding, a feeding of relief, a feeding of contentment, a feeding of comfort, a feeding that God is going to take care of it. So why am I stressing myself out? I'm just talking about for a moment the grace, the sustaining grace. Cast thy burden. Upon the Lord, and he shall make provision for thee. He shall make provision for thee. How? Through his sustaining grace. Cast thy burden upon the Lord. I like this one. Cast thy burden upon the Lord, and he shall receive thee. Amen. He'll receive you. He'll, Brother Joe, can I, sh- can I have you one more time? He, can, he'll, he receives you. 
oh, he receives you. You know, I think he does it. And he does this. He goes, oh, do it again. <laughs> oh, do it again. He receives us. I'm talking about the sustaining grace cast thy burden upon me. The Lord and he shall receive thee. Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall, are you ready for this? Provide. <laughs> Woo! Cast thy burden upon the Lord and he shall bide, uh, provide sustenance for thee. That's the sustaining uh, uh, grace of God. It's not easy to enjoy this grace, but it is there for us to enjoy nevertheless. The only thing that keeps us from enjoying it is our pride. The reason we don't enjoy this sustaining grace like we should is because we think by wringing our hands over it some way and somehow that it's going to change things. When the Bible tells us right out, it's not going to change anything. You're not going to grow one inch, not a iota, not a hair width by concerning yourself over things that we do not have control over. So we can lean into the sustaining grace of God. I Tell you, I'm glad that not only does he sustain us, but listen, there's also this thing called the hiding grace of God. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock that covers me there with his hand. The song says, and then we find over in Proverbs chapter 27, verse 5, for in the time of trouble, he shall hide me in his pavilion. And let's don't forget what that word also means. Yes, I know we're talking about the temple, but also that word translates to tent. And there again, we've got the picture, the picture of the shepherd, the great shepherd. And you know the uh, culture, the tradition of that day, if there was a shepherd's tent in the field and someone were in trouble, they could go to the shepherd's tent and grab a hold of the post that held up the middle, there in the middle of the shepherd's tent. And that shepherd would be mandated to protect that person hanging on to the post. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a hiding grace in God no matter how far we've gone or where we've gone or how long we've been gone, we can enjoy this hiding pavilion, this tabernacle, this tent. Amen. The tent of the great shepherd. The hiding place is a wonderful, wonderful place. The hiding grace of God. I was... Looking at another song, you forgive me. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. A wonderful Savior to me. He hideth my soul in the cleft of the rock where rivers of pleasures I see. A wonderful Savior is Jesus my Lord. He taketh my burden away and holdeth me up and I shall not be moved. He giveth me strength as my day. With numberless blessings, each moment he crowns, and filled with his fullness divine, I sing in my rapture, oh, glory to God, for such a redeemer as mine. When clothed in his brightness, transported I rise to meet him in clouds of the sky. His perfect salvation, His wondrous love. Hey, we'll shout with the millions on high. I'm talking about the hiding grace of God. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to the day that the Lord calls us home. 
I'm like most of you here. I, I hope we're caught up together in the rapture. But one way or the other, I'm going to heaven. And if you're saved, one way or the other, you're stuck. You're going to heaven whether you like it or not. Wouldn't it be funny for a Christian to back up and say, well, I just don't want to go to heaven. Well, tough cookies. I saw a guy, uh, he was being interviewed, and he decided that God wouldn't, he, he was a, uh, he caught he so he was a Christian, went to church. Matter of fact, he was a minister. He was a minister turned atheist. Well, I wanted you to know, I don't know what is stuck in that bad boy's crawl. Apparently, he's bitter against God to the point that he would even denounce his existence. I don't know if he's saved or not. But I want to tell you this. If he is, he's going to heaven whether he likes it or not. That's right. I don't count on salvation, to be honest with you. But I'm just saying whether he likes it or not, is if, if he's just bitter and broken with God, he'll still end up in heaven. And he'll realize how stupid he was. I'm just saying, folks, we can trust the hiding grace we can trust the sustaining grace that God has given us. I don't know about you tonight, but I'd like to embrace that grace. We enjoy it whether we embrace it or not. We just do not get to enjoy it to its fullest. What about you, Christians? Are you enjoying the grace that God has given you? You know, He's given us not just a hiding grace, not just a sustaining grace, but I'm going to close with this. He's given us a purposeful grace. That's right. He's given us grace for a purpose. I said this morning, our Lord doesn't do things without reason. Uh, he, like I mentioned, he'd be a fool. To come to this world if we could work our way to heaven. He would have been crazy to come and die for our sins. And likewise, he, everything he does, he does for a reason. And he, Even in his grace, he has purpose. Purposeful grace. 1 Corinthians 15.10 says, But by the grace of God, listen to what Paul says, But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Amen. That's right. By the grace of God, I am what I am. By the grace of God, I am what I am. And His grace, which was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. <laughs> That's right. He gives us grace. A purposeful grace. He gives us the strength to do what He wants us to do for Him. <clears throat> and Paul's saying, God was not disappointed in the grace He gave me. <clears throat> the purposeful grace that God has allowed me to enjoy, He's saying, <clears throat> was not in vain. Then he doesn't stop there. <clears throat> then he goes, I think he puts a stamp on this thing. He says, but, because he's saying that this purposeful grace bestowed upon him was not in vain. Then he goes a little further. He says, but, I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, now listen to this, but the grace of God which was with me. God bestows a purposeful grace upon us, and if we will allow him to, he will work his graciousness through us for his own glory. Are we allowing that in our lives 
tonight. You know, I know that I know folks were concerned with the weather, and I can I, I understand that. I really do. I I was concerned. Pastor Payne and I were on the phone, and, uh, talked about it for a while, and Dave and I were on the phone, talked about it for a while, and I had to wait Lisa up and talk about it for a while. And <clears throat> we were all. You know, concerns. I, I want you to know I'm not I'm not being ugly when I say this. But the purpose purposeful grace of God that rests on us is just that. It has a purpose. And so many tonight that are not here in the house of God are missing their purpose. You know why? Because out in midget needed a blessing that only that purpose, that person with that gracious purpose that God has given them could fulfill that niche. And so I'm going to go home tonight without that particular blessing, that particular encouragement. You may go home tonight because someone missed their gracious purpose. You may have been that purpose when we are not where God wants us, where He intends His children to be and doing what He has purposed us to do. We hurt the cause of Christ and never even know it. Until we get to heaven, we will not understand the damage that we've done when we do not rest in the purposeful grace of God. Amen, preacher. That's good preaching. I don't care who you are. I don't care what denomination you are. That's just good preaching. Amen. What's our purpose? We have hiding grace, sustaining grace. Oh, praise God, we have purposeful grace. Christians, are we allowing the purposeful grace of God to work in us and through us? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to be in your house. I pray, oh God, that you would touch minds and hearts. I pray, Father, you will have your will and your way during the invitation. Lord, if there's one here that doesn't know you as their Savior, would you let them be saved today? Let them be saved, Lord, before it's eternally too late. And then, Lord, there's those that do know you as their Savior. Your children that are here tonight. And, Father, we need to enjoy this grace that you've labeled as sufficient. Lord, it is sufficient. And God, I pray that you would challenge the hearts of every Christian that we will bathe in your grace. Starting tonight, O Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. Let's stand up, please, as we sing. You come as the Holy Spirit leads you. The invitation's not, not a difficult one. Hey, Lord, I just want to enjoy this graciousness you provided. Preacher preached on grace this morning that gave me three more points tonight. And I just want to enjoy your grace. I'm trying, I'm tired, Lord, of trying to shove it through, press it through, cram it in. I just want your gracious spirit to work through me. That's it. Pretty easy invitation. Won't you come? Just as I am without one plea, but that thy blood was shed for me, and that thou bidst me come to
Just the regular announcements for the week, Brother Joe.